All right, here we go. Now that we've reached the shop job where we are focusing on limiting the operator on a direction change and not just on uh, stopping the motor, we have to do a couple of things. First thing is we have to be able to store the last direction so we can test that against the, the selected direction to see whether we have changed directions or not. And then we want to limit. We don't want to limit uh, based on just stopping the motor like we have previously. So uh, what I'm going to take you through here is a uh, steps in a design process. And in doing so, I'm going to show you snippets of code. Uh, if you just go through this program and just copy down the snippets of code and use it to uh, complete your shop job, you're, you're missing out on uh, the point or the objective that I have for this lesson. Um, you might be able to go through this whole semester and solve all of the shop jobs and not learn what I'm trying to teach you, and that's actually the design process. Um, so. I'm, hopefully you'll be cognizant of what I'm doing in the in the early slides when I'm uh, making decisions and how that's going to move forward and then you'll start to uh, gain some of your own skills as to how you're going to do that in the future okay so let's look at um, different types of information that we have in this circuit okay and in 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 most more complex circuits uh, we can break these down into categories. The first one is a selected category, and that's basically, in uh, in our case, it's either going to be a selector switch um, and push buttons, or it's going to be push buttons alone are going to select the uh, the forward and reverse, and uh, uh, whether we are running or stopping. Okay, so we have selected types of information that we'll need to vet um, for the for this circuit. We'll also have commanded uh, types of information and what commanded is is it's going to take into account multiple items usually. It doesn't have to, it could just be one, but if it takes into account multiple items like maybe the e-stop is not pressed, the stop is not pressed, but the forward button is pressed then we're going to send a command out to start the motor. Okay, so that's what a commanded output is. I have uh, I have these with the address is not showing because the address is not really as important as what it represents. So this would be typically a binary and this would be a run command that we would use later on in the program to actually go and drive a, a control relay. Okay or it could literally be a control relay because that is a command output as well. As we get more and more complex in these we're going to have to be using binaries before we actually drive the output because we have multiple decisions uh, much like in this case we have a multiple decision as to whether we have changed directions or not and we have to do a lot of questioning before we can actually drive those outputs. Okay, And then the third category that we have here is status. So this is what we're trying to do out in the field, right? Just because we drive the output, we command that output, doesn't mean that it actually changed. We could have a wiring issue. We could have a component issue like a relay um, is uh, damaged or uh, not even there. It could uh, The, the A-pin relay could be pulled out of the socket. Um, so the way that we know that something actually physically happened in the field is the status we get back. Now these are, in the uh, case of an 8-pin relay, it's pins 1 and 3 are wired to an input and gives us the status that that relay, when we drive the output, it actually changed position. And that's very important. We should never drive something from a PLC and assume that it is running. Um, we should test it, um, test the status of that field device to see if it is uh, running or not. Okay, So those are the three categories. Selected is uh, what the operator is doing, pushing a button or changing a selector switch. Commanded is what we're driving uh, as part of our control device. And uh, the status is what we're getting back from the field that tells us the state of uh, the component in the field. Okay, We're going to need all three of those categories for us to be able to solve this problem.
Okay. So let's look at the pieces of information that we have for, this would be for a three push button forward and reverse of a single phase motor. Okay. And so we have uh, two directions, forward and reverse. Okay. And then here we have a selection, we have a command, and we have a status that we're going to get back. And a three position, a single phase motor is a, a unique uh, component because we have to have two relays um, and so then we have two status that come back from the field um, and we're going to come up with a strategy of how we're going to to make that look like it's just uh, one piece of information that we're getting back. So first this uh, is the address for our forward button. This is the green push button. That's going to be our forward button and this is the address for the yellow button which is going to be our reverse button. Um, these don't necessarily have to be the addresses that you use. I'm just using the first two binaries to show. This one is going to be our commanded bit or our commanded piece of information for um, forward. And this is going to be our commanded output or bit for reverse. And we know because we have two relays, this one item coming on needs to actually turn on two relays. Um, this one item coming on needs to turn on only one relay, but we also need to make sure that the other relay is, is not turned on. Okay, So that's why we have this status that comes back. And now this is the status uh, bit that we get from control relay number one, and this is the status bit or address that we get from control relay number two. And they're just copied down here. If you notice here, I'm showing the address in perpetuity, just the, the address itself. Or here, I have an underline underneath there. And if you remember from manual motor controls, if it has an underline, that is a negation, meaning not um, that address being true. Um, or in other words, it being false. Okay. So this would be if CR1 has status and CR2 has no status coming in, that is our direction our forward direction where if CR1 has status coming in that's true and CR2 has status coming in or is energized as well that is our status for our reverse. Now we're going to look in the next slide here is how we're actually going to to code that um, and make it look like it's just one piece of information. Okay so we have control relay one status comes in at that uh, that seventh position, seventh bit, and control relay two comes in at the eighth bit. Um, of course, we have our forward command, and it could vary um, for uh, each user. And I uh, named or gave a symbol for that one as forward run. That is not specified by me. You could call it something different. Um, you call it forward command or forward direction. Um, just don't, you can't use any of the symbols that I've already defined on the, uh, the job sheet itself. And then we have a reverse command. It's just the next bit down on our, uh, on our binary word there. And then we're going to get uh, our two push buttons. One is, I'm sorry, uh, the two lights that are going to indicate um, the uh, either forward or reverse. So this is the address for the white light and this is the symbol on your job sheet for the white light and this is your address for the blue light and this is the symbol um, that we have for the blue light. Okay. Now we're going to use these pieces of information um, to uh, do a couple of things for us in this code snippet and so what I'm going to do is use that table from before and create this code. Okay, so if we looked at the table before, if I'm commanding the forward motor to run and I have a uh, closed set of contacts from control relay one and an open, remember this is an examine if open instruction, an open set of contacts in control relay two, that is my definition of forward. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the white light. Now what we're going to find here, and this is a little trick we can do in PLCs, is now I can use this address 
to represent the combination of those three uh, pieces of information put together. Okay, so we're going to see that here in the next slide. Okay, my definition for reverse based on my um, my table back here definition. So that was my definition of forward, right? The command here being on, and this is examine if closed, or we're testing for a one, and here we're going to test for a zero. So that's why we use an examine if open. And that's how we got that first rung. And then the second rung is going to be, I'm commanding it to go in reverse. And the status that I get back from the field is both control, control relays pulled in. And that gives us this, this rung here. So I'm driving the output. And I get a set of contacts back from our control relay, number one. And I also get a set of contacts back from control relay number two. If all three of those have logical continuity, I'll have run continuity and I will get a reverse indication. And again, I will be able to use that reverse indication um, below in the program. This would, if you notice, this is the, the, the first two rungs in my program. I want this up at the top so then I can use those later down in the program. Okay, so that was a single phase forward and reverse status rungs. Okay, so this gives me the status that tells me I'm in forward. This gives me the status that tells me in reverse. Okay, and it took combinations of these items uh, to actually give me that piece of information. Okay, so now let's look at a holding circuit and how that can be beneficial to us in the holding circuit. So we have an emergency stop, a stop button and a forward push button and we have a uh, binary that I previously said was B300 and I put a symbol on it of this forward run. Okay, So if I put that together into a holding circuit I have my E stop, my stop, my forward push button and then here is my binary. Okay, But now before you probably had multiple things down here you probably are looking at this and saying, well, why, why don't I have B300 down here like you taught me in previous lessons? Well, it's already built into this forward indication. Remember, we said that we wanted B300 to be on. We wanted the control relay number one set of contacts coming back from the field and control relay number two set of contacts to be at a zero that was going to give me this forward direction. So that's all built into this input. So when I press my forward button, I energize that uh, binary bit. When I energize that binary bit later in the program, I'm going to send that to my control relay. My control relay energizes. This is already on. Uh, my If I get the proper status contacts back, this will come on and then I'll have a nice holding circuit here for my forward uh, direction. So conceptually, I want you to understand that. I'm not going to show you how to do in reverse, but basically it's the same rung with a reverse push button, the reverse indication in the holding circuit, and a reverse run binary, which would have to be different from this binary here. OK, now let's take that information and try to come up with a uh, definition for last direction. Okay. So if my commanded and my status agree with one another, we want to save that last direction into the binary register. So I have that all built up into this forward, right? I'm testing to make sure that I'm commanding it to forward. I'm testing to make sure that my status contacts come back from CR1 as being closed and my status contacts from CR2 as being open. That's all built up into here. So I want to, whenever I go forward, I am going to store that in last direction. But this has an inherent problem. What, what problem do you see here? soon as I stop the motor, I'm also going to lose this because soon as this becomes false, it's I'm going to write false right to here. 
Now, my definition of keeping track of this is when the motor goes off is when I actually really want to, to know what the last direction was. Okay, So the issue is that the last direction forward will only be true while it's running, and we actually want it to be true um, even when it's off. Okay, So we want to hold that last direction in with a binary, so think about how we can do that. Well, we literally call it a holding circuit for that very reason. We want to be able to hold in this status of us being in forward in our circuit. Okay, so let's hold that last direction. We can hold it by referencing that binary register um, in that rung and hold in that decision based on that. So this is our, our holding uh, rung branch. And you notice this is the same address here as it is here. So last forward and last forward. So as soon as I go to forward, this will come on and I will have a holding circuit here. And when the motor stops, this will go off, but I will remain held in here. So I will know that my last direction was forward. Okay. There's an issue with this, though, is once I uh, get into a last forward direction, there's nothing to clear that out. There's no stop switch, per se. Um, so we need to come up with a way of releasing it. And so what is a definition for us not being last forward? So we want to be able to define an event that would clear out that last forward binary. So think about that just for a minute. Um, when do we want to uh, no longer keep track that the direction was in forward? Well, it isn't when we were in stop because stop uh, is not a direction, it's the absence of a direction, okay? So by definition, making it all the way to the reverse status uh, negates that last direction from being forward because now the last direction would be reverse. So what you would do is over here, we would just use that reverse status. Remember, we have already predefined that, and that's our blue light, and it's perfectly fine for us to use an output address on a test instruction here. And when that output address goes true, see right now it's false, that's why it's green. But when it goes true, this will no longer evaluate because it's testing for a zero. When it goes to one, it's going to clear out this rung. So it'll take away this last forward bit. It will no longer be active. And we'll have some code that'll be just like this, but our forward and our reverse will be swapped, and this will be a new address that will be last reverse. And um, it will energize that, saying our last direction was reverse. I'm not going to show you that code here. I'm, I want you to kind of understand the process here and have you port that into um, the other directions code. Okay, so now if we, if we take this same logic and we store the last reverse using the same um, you know, logic that we have here, the same process that we did, <clears throat> we'll have two bits of information. We'll have what the last direction was, either forward or reverse, and uh, we will now be able to determine if there's been a direction change. So what defines a direction change? Well, if the last running direction is opposite from the currently selected direction, and you have to think about what we talked about, the three different pieces of information at the beginning of the lesson here. There is selections, there are commands, and then there are status. So we're going to check the status against the selection. Okay. So here, what this is saying is, if I was last and forward, Look here, this is the reverse push button. Okay, If someone selects reverse or is pushing that a reverse push button, that is by definition a direction change. And if you notice, the address there is the address for the yellow light, which is the light that we want to come on if there has been a direction change. Okay, So the only, uh, there's an issue with this though. The only the issue with this is this is only going to be on for as long as I'm holding down that button. 
once I let go of the button, this will go away. And we want to actually lock in that direction change. So let's hold that direction change in. We're going to use our holding circuit again. Um, we can hold the circuit by referencing its binary register in a holding rung. Okay, so I put in a, a rung branch here, and I'm just referencing this direction change in itself right here. Okay, and so now we have this last forward, and somebody pushed the reverse button. And it, once they do, this comes on, and now I'm sealed in here. Okay, so even if they let go of the reverse button, I am still going to hold in someone commanded a direction change, meaning that we have to wait. Okay. So the issue again is once this is held, it's going to hold in the direction change um, forever. Um, so we need some way of releasing this. Okay. So we need to come up with a de definition uh, as to what is uh, going to release the circuit. Now let's think all the way back to the problem. We want to keep track of a direction change for the purposes of waiting for the start switch to re-engage. And <clears throat> we also have a timer that is timing a uh, the, the motor spin down and we've kind of estimated that the time would be about eight seconds for that start switch to come on. So that timer being done is going to be our, um, our, uh, our initiation is to, we don't care any longer about direction change because once the start switch uh, clicks, we can go in any direction that we want. So by definition, uh, we only care about this direction change when the motor, until the motor timing is done. So we're going to use that done bit to reset this holding circuit. So here, I'm, here's our uh, last forward and reverse push button. I went ahead and added in the last reverse and someone pushing the forward button. That's another definition for direction change, right? We were going in reverse and now you're trying to go forward or we were going in forward and now you're trying to go into reverse. And uh, we're holding that in with our direction change um, uh, output here. And here is what is going to actually clear out our direction change. After our timer has uh, been running for eight seconds, our done bit is going to become true. When our done bit becomes true, this, the done bit will go to a one. Well, this is testing for a zero. Once it goes to one, it's going to reset this whole line and it's going to take away our direction change. So that direction change um, will no longer be um, necessary because our start switch is re-engaged and we are uh, we are free to pick any direction that we want. So a couple things that uh, you'll need to add into your program. Number one, you'll have to write the code for the uh, remembering the last reverse direction. And then you're going to have to use this change bit somewhere. I didn't show that above. But we want it during change bit to be able to disable um, your either your forward or your reverse um, direction from being able to change. So um, look at that and see how you can uh, complete that to be able to complete this shop job. And of course, this one was based on three push buttons. If we uh, if we were using a selector switch, this would just be your selector switch uh, addresses instead of your um, push button addresses. So the selector switch is what's changing the direction and uh, that's the difference between uh, this job and the next job. Okay. So I hope that helps and we'll see you in the next lesson.